So it looks like uh, many people are upset over things going on in France and in Holland because of the so-called ban on overt religious and political uh, clothing, a euphemism for hijab. And uh, I know this may, well, I don't know why it would offend people, but, you know, there's always just a good chance you say anything today, it will, <coughs> it will offend people. But, you know, I think it's important to understand history and consequences of history and how um, things develop. So, this is something that's been in my mind for a while. And I think, you know, when it comes to the Muslims living in Europe, and, and I know people say, well, you know, this is a lot of audacity on your part to talk about Muslims in Europe when you don't live in Europe, you're an American Muslim. And it's actually precisely for this point. I think, you know, there's a kind of growing global activist kind of consciousness uh, amongst Muslims. So, you know, we see what's going on in America with Trump, and then we see what's going on in Europe with France and Holland and so on. And... Uh, there's a distinction, though, between America and Europe. So, for one, America is a much more religious country than Europe. Um, I think the the question of belief is uh, much more up in the air in Europe than it is uh, in America. And also, um, you know, we just you know, we've lived a different history. So my my. My point that I'm trying to get out, because this, this is something that's been floating around in my, my head for a while, is that, you know, even though I'm not a European Muslim and I don't live in Europe, I think Muslims need to reconsider their want to live in Europe. Maybe it's not such a good thing to be Muslim and be in Europe. And I know this will sound kind of crazy. I, I only say it because, um, you know, the kind of results of history over the last couple hundred years, the downfall of Muslim-majority societies in ways that they have, quote-unquote, fallen behind um, other parts of the world. Now, granted, some of that comes from, um, you know, invasion, colonialism, all those other things, right? But then there's also the brain drain, and some of that also is a result of those things, right? So I think in order for us to understand what's going on now, we need to have a more comprehensive understanding of what has taken place in the world and in the so-called Muslim world over the last, I don't know, two, three hundred years. And we need to address why Muslims would want to go to Europe in that it's, you know, a predominantly non-Muslim spot. Um, and I know this will offend some people, but, you know, I don't, I'm not defending, uh, however you pronounce that dude's name. It looks like Geert Wilders, but apparently it's Wilder. I don't, I don't speak Dutch, so. But him and, you know, like Le Pen and these other people, um, I mean, I can understand some, not, not them, but, but some other people just saying, Hey, look, you got all these people coming in and they're, you know, the, the, with the, uh, appearance of changing culture, right? I could only imagine what it would be like if, I don't know, a bunch of non-Muslims wanted to move to Medina <laughs> or something. Uh, and I'm being, you know, grotesque and obvious, uh, uh, but I'm just trying to make a point. So I can understand in some ways people like, look, yo, this is our culture, you know, um, and 
people tend to be xenophobic. It's not that I'm advocating for um, some kind of isolationism, right? But I think we may need to reconsider. Um, we may need to reconsider, you know, or those Muslims may need to reconsider um, staying in Europe. Um, I mean, I, I know for me, for one, I just couldn't imagine it being that not even just against Islam in particular, but just against religion in general, it just seemed to be so hostile. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine it, you know, um, you know, I know it's not as easy for, you know, millions of people just to, you know, pick up their bricks and move somewhere else. But I think, um, in contrast to that, right, you'd say, okay, well then why don't you leave the United States? Um, well, that's actually been something that myself and some close friends of mine, you know, we've kicked this can around for years. But I think, one, it's different. I think Islam has much more of a foothold in America with blackness than it does in Europe. And not just because there aren't, I mean, obviously there's, there's, there's black or African Muslims in Europe. But I don't think there's this the same... The same thing that roots America, I mean, roots blackness in America, I don't see the same thing in Europe. So in some ways, I wonder, like, what will keep the Muslims rooted or be able to stay rooted in their Islam uh, in the way that there is the potential for it in America? Not that we will not also have tremendous uh, challenges here, but I do see that there is a difference between... Um, Muslims in America and Muslims in Europe. So I think this is something that needs to be thought. And, you know, I know in the past, I mean, you had Pakistan, right, that was trying to make the formation of a Muslim state that went horribly bad. Um, but because it went horribly bad doesn't mean that, you know, uh, these kinds of uh, ideas shouldn't be revisited again. And, um, you know, for me, I, I, I certainly see, like, one of the major things that prohibits uh, a kind of Muslim repatriation, right, Muslims going back to, you know, various Muslim countries. I mean, the challenges are, I think, um, you know, economic. Not a lot of Muslim countries are, are economically viable, um, and the few that are somewhat um, in certain industries, like maybe in the Gulf, um, just as one example, I know that for a, a number of us, you know, it's great, like for instance, Saudi Arabia, it's great to go and, you know, it's great to go to the Haramain, it's great to go to Mecca, it's great to go to Medina, it's great to be in those places. But living there is an entirely uh, another thing, and that there doesn't seem to be room for us to uh, assimilate into those societies as Muslims. So, you know, some of the rampant, you know, tribalism, uh, racism, other things actually hampers Muslims from going back. So it, it's kind of a quandary. You know, it's kind of a quagmire as to why um, these aren't the case. Uh, are the, the possibilities are, are, are just, you know, I think this is why it hasn't been done. Um, so, yeah, I think in, in light of that, you know, Muslims are going to have an extraordinarily difficult time going forward, um, which, you know should make us really think. I mean, obviously, something as ridiculous as uh, the Islamic State, right? Allah has not given this any blessing. These people appear to be cursed, not just misguided, but cursed. Um, so the question is, like, what's the way forward for Muslims? You know, um, I think this is something that we need to have some of the best and brightest minds sitting down talking about and thinking about um because in some ways 
My concern is that because of so much displacement that Muslims have, I think, given up the idea of having a place to kind of call their own, right? And that, you know, due to historical circumstances, like as a black American Muslim, you know, working to find my home here in America, that's, you know, that's a set of circumstances that were already, you know, essentially put in play before I was even born. So I'm making the best out of what I can. Um, my concern is that Muslims are only involved in just trying to make the best out of what they can, kind of like a proverbial survivor, right? You've got a few raw materials and you're just trying to stay alive versus really thinking how to build. And that, yes, we should think about how to build and contribute uh, in what societies we live in. But I think we also need to maybe go back and brainstorm. I think the challenge would be, right, how uh, perhaps um, in countries other than, in Muslim countries other than Saudi Arabia, right, like what are the potentials to go? I mean, the diaspora community of Muslims, you know, convert and non-convert alike, uh, especially in the West, I mean, we have highly desirable skill sets. I mean, many of us uh, have top tier education. We have highly desirable skill sets and occupations, you know, medicine, technology, uh, you name it. Um, is there a way that maybe those could be put to work in somewhere else, right? Um, anyway, just something on the top of my mind that's in the back of my head, so to speak. It's been there for a while. And then uh, when this stuff came out about France and uh, Holland, it just made me think of these things again, um, not completely hashed out, but then again, it was a long night. Uh, so leave some thoughts, comments, uh, let me know what you think. Assalamu alaikum.